I know, it's already. That day, you get lost hiking in the woods. Use the stars, aka nature's compass, to get back to camp. The stars actually teach you all sorts of things, like how one of the stars in Orion's belt is actually a nebula. The stars also teach you Italian, the quadratic formula, and the true meaning of friendship. Well, stars sure are smart. They give you plus two smarts. Afterwards, you meet up with Otterby and Hex. Ever since you received that mysterious scroll, you three have been on a long, arduous quest. You solved countless puzzles, followed clue after clue, prepped your inventory, and now you're finally here. The secret location of the Ring of Sustenance. Boring. What the f It's just a big dumb wall. This isn't a bagel shop or a dungeon. I want a refund. Adventure awaits. Oh, that's not just a wall. Bye. Check out the weird markings. We gotta insert the scepter from the second puzzle, and there, that should do it. Suddenly the ground below you starts shaking. The wall crumbles away and opens up a huge dark cavern. You hear that telltale door opening music cue. You also hear a deep mysterious voice emanating from the cavern. Adventurers, if you seek the ring of sustenance, triumph over evil in this dungeon of bread. Yeah. Yes! That's a motherfucking dungeon! I told you so. Ha! <sighs> you were right. There's no arguing with that music cue. Let's get this over with, RV. At least let me eat some bread demon flesh while we're in there. I'll head into the dungeon of bread, and Arvi is absolutely crushing it. She solves three puzzles immediately and finds the dungeon map without taking any damage. Ew. Boo. Dungeon maps suck. Why would you need a map of the dungeon? What is this, school? <laughs> Are you kidding me? The dungeon map is half the fun, and it gets even better when you get the compass. Arvi takes out the mini boss in three hits and locks down the boss key. Soon you arrive at the boss chamber. It's quiet. Too quiet. Huh? This is going to be such a sick boss fight. Check out that huge lava pit in the middle of the room. Pretty dodgy if you ask me. The boss is gonna pop out of ah! Arvi was totally right. The dungeon boss leaps out of the huge pit of lava. It's a massive fire breathing lizard. You pieces of shit coming to my house! The dungeon boss roars. Fucking fight me to the death! Yikes. You get around the corner while Arvi battles the dungeon boss. She, does, she dodges its attack sequences, gets in a few parries, but her attacks don't seem to be working. Unbelievable! Shit! Why isn't it taking any damage? This is a bread-based dungeon. I didn't expect a fire-type boss. My weapons aren't optimized for this. Holy shit. We're gonna die. I can't die. I have leftovers in this fridge waiting for me. Calm down. We need to figure out the dungeon boss's weakness. Everybody has a weakness, right? I can't believe I'm saying this, but homie, I need your help. You're going to help RV, or you're going to literally die trying. Quick, what's the best way to figure out this dungeon boss's fatal weakness? Doesn't fucking matter. I don't have the points for it, because I got averaged. Attack the dungeon boss in its heart. Text its ex-lovers and ask if they'd be willing to spitefully share its weakness. Attack the dungeon boss in its privacy. Hack into its laptop and snoop through its search history until you find its weakness. I mean, that seems like smarts. It's the high... Nice. Yeah. That's genius. Our internet search history reveals our truest, most vulnerable selves. For example, I recently googled how to eat someone's hair without them noticing. Harvey distracts the dungeon boss and you sneakily grab his laptop. It's hacking time, baby. Using your god level hacking skills, you immediately figure out the dungeon boss's ma the dungeon boss's master password, undefeated boss 6969. You start checking through the boss's search history looking for a weakness. You recently googled dungeon unpopular because I, boss, am too, am too invincible, help. You also googled dungeon boss no weak point, and are invincible bosses less relatable, likable, and how to grow huge, vulnerable eye on my back. Also, it looks like the dungeon boss is a member of several internet support groups for invincible, immortal monsters. Yikes. Your hacking skills have revealed that this dungeon boss is basically unbeatable. This is impossible! No weakness! That's bullshit! Everyone has a weakness, homie! For example, my weakness is you, as in I was weak to let someone so useless join my adventuring party. Bye, loser! If you're not going to help me beat this fire lizard's ass and leave. Your stats drag the whole party down anyway. They do! Fucking Juan. <laughs> yeah. It's like I always say, can't stand the heat and get the fuck out of the lava field boss chamber. Leave the dungeon, completely heartbroken. Thanks to the super complicated dungeon puzzle, it takes you like two hours to find the exit. Since Otterby officially kicked you out of her adventure party, you no longer get her experience share bonus, which means you lose minus three boldness. You really fucked this one up, huh? Thanks, game. I can do this. I mean, yeah. All oh, their faces change, would you? Yeah. Oh? Oh? Oh, and then, yeah, Hex's face, he's like normally wide-eyed and then, eh? Ah. Wink. Smile. Wink. Wink. Oh. Mothman? Yeah, she's gonna tell me to fuck off, I know. Sure 
thing. It's like, ah, ah, fuck you, no way. Finally, you have the courage to ask your beloved to watch the meteor shower with you. Wait, you want to be my summer fling? Oh, gee. Hmm, I don't know. Just like your stats. You have some fun and some smarts, but you haven't taken care of the less obvious stats. For example, your appeal is super low. I'd say it's not you, it's me, but being this unappealing is on you, loser. Burn. Bye. Uh, muted and reported. <laughs> muted and reported. The pain of this rejection is unbearable. Your world falls apart. You seek therapy to mend your heart, but no therapist wants to take your case. They state a broken heart from an unrequited summer love is too hard of a case to solve. I guess time will heal your heart, or maybe it won't. Who knows? Just sit and wait. Yeah, I could have gotten a fucking secret ending. If it wouldn't have fucked my stats, I could have fucking... I was clearly on to something there. But that whole fucking bagel business. God damn it. Oh, that pisses me off. Oh, that pisses me off. Oh, that pisses me off. I was so close. So close. Before we knew it, those weeks were gone. It felt like a hot minute, and, and it felt like an entire lifetime. That night, as we saw summer coming to an end, we all wondered what would come next for us. It felt like the end of something big. Little did we know, life still had many wonders and misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older and I can see it, how those years became the foundation of the mythology of our lives. Broken hearts turned tragedies sung for centuries, wild nights became epics treasured forever. Every kiss and every laugh is now a constellation we'll always find while gazing into the starry night, no matter how many years go by. Even today I can still close my eyes, and I'm there. On that last summer night, Feeling like I was just starting to live life. Oh, I love this music. With all my friends around that campfire. So young, unafraid. And so ready to start. Hell yeah. God, I love these. I love these this animated outro now. Cause before there was just like these little pictures in, in the first game, it was like these little pictures that like fucking scrolled by in the credits. But like this? I fuck with this. I fuck with this heavy. It's a lot to us. Fair enough.
I fucking love this. Just unlock Ko-Fi beats to relax. Oh, you can unlock new drinks? <laughs> That's fucking great, actually. Ko-Fi beats for like co like coffee like coffee, I get it. Wow. Wow. This this is fucking great. This this is honestly any any everything I could ask for. This, they have multiple sequels planned for Monster Prom. That was the whole point of their Kickstarter, was that there's several sequels in the works. And this this one is supposed to be most reminiscent of the original game. The next two games are going to be like, I don't know about totally different, but they're going to be very, definitely going to be very different. They're going to differ differentiate from the usual formula like this. This is very much just like the original. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through again. Alright, I, I think what I'm going to try to do is try to get at least one good ending with every character, and that'll be my playthrough of this game. Because I love this game. It's it's it's, it's so much fucking fun. I, I'm constantly smiling the whole time. I fucking love it. It's just such a good time. It really is. So I'm going to try again. I'm going to try to see if I can't trigger that same sub-story that was going on before with the whole bagel quest shit. But I'm going to go through it again, I'll skip over anything that's, you know, already been seen or anything. Anything new pops up, I'll put it in, obviously. So without further ado. Alright. <laughs> you go into the haunted manor with a group, only to immediately split up once you get inside, as is customary. You quickly get lost and have no cell signal, but in a stroke of genius you follow the signs which the haunted manor is lost and found, wait for your friends to pick you up. You find all sorts of cool n lost knickknacks while you wait. Some bloody gloves, a haunted iPod, the only place thriller by Michael Jackson. A totally normal Furby that still manages to be the creepiest thing in there. At the bottom of the box you find plus two boldness, yoink. Who in the right mind would throw that away? Afterwards, you're very busy making a friendship bracelet. It's spooky when you see Otter V power walking through your location with a look of fierce determination in her eyes. Okay, so the Dragon of Danger Mountain found the incredibly incredibly rare ruby that somehow grows inside a tree, but only during the eclipse and only if you're leveled up. I tripped a jackalope and got the mouse's glasses back so I could trade in the seed for the feed and then put it on the altar under the evil well after I drained it using the turtle. And I cleaned the agent stables and picked up the wizard the wizard farts dry cleaning. What's next? Huh. Sounds like Otterby is having quite the day. You ask her why she's doing all these random tasks. <sighs> Don't get me started. She's doing side quests. Helping everyone fight their enemies or find rare items. She can't take the five minutes to find me a pizza for my side quest. Hey, I already told you, ordering a pizza isn't a quest with a high enough XP reward. We'll do that after I do one last real side quest for the day. Wanna come along and help me out, homie? Two heads are better than one. Hey, I thought I was your second head. You've been keeping track of everything you like you asked. Oh, great. Let's see what I have left. Robert the robber should date Thomas the raccoon landlord. Hacks? These are just shipping charts between all my side quest prospects. What's your point? My point is a list of who should fight and who should fuck, and a flowchart of love triangles does nothing for me in terms of figuring out my next move. Oh, well, all those side quests do nothing for me in terms of finding me a pizza. Look, if I have to power through all these side quests, I may as well add some drama through my shipping flowcharts, so it plays like some sort of telenovela in my mind. Luckily for RV, evaluating bonkers courses of action based on what stats they'll give you is practically the only thing you do. Looking at Hex's notes, it's immediately clear which side quest will unlock the ultimate goal, making Otterby smile. Help the local mayor to open a TikTok account so he can bond with his teenage son. That'd be fun. Collect 10 turnips for the town's guard, who is totally not using them to pleasure himself. Hmm. Uh. Collect 10 turnips? Bold, ah, hell yeah. There's an awkward silence, and you wonder if maybe you overdid it by adding the not using to pleasure himself part, which, hey, they all seem to realize he totally was. I live for the scandal of it all. Guard X turnip OTP, let's go. 
As long as I get my loot and XP, I'm always collecting random shit for random shitheads, and I've never questioned what they're doing with it. I'm not about to start now. It's easier just to assume it's innocuous. 60 ore here, five apples there, two gallons of lube and a leather gimp mask, a dragon cock, you know, just normal stuff. Roger, let's go collect some turnips. Or stew, maybe. You agree to buy into this mass delusion and go get some very normal and non-sexual turnips. You give cheese to the psychic hog who tells you how to fight the Gru in the dark, before giving hot cocoa to the snake for a back rub, and somehow at the end you have like 600 turnips. The logic is convoluted, but it makes for a fun bonding adventure. At the end of the day, you find yourselves presenting the blushing guard with a fuck ton of turnips. Don't worry, we don't judge. Which vegetables you stick up your butt is none of our business. Oh no, says the guard looking mortified. When I said romantic prospects, that wasn't a euphemism. I just wanted to build myself a nice turnip boyfriend to go on dates with. Life at the town's guard can get lonely. Lately, most social interactions just make me anxious. Good evening, turnip boyfriend. Don't you like dashing? Produce? For me? You shouldn't have. Thai food in a movie? I'd love to go. Is he talking to the, for the turnip boyfriend too? You're so nice, Mr. Town Guard. I'll always accept you as you are, and I'll shower you with unconditional love and omega-3 fatty acids. I live for the plot twist of it all. Shockingly, I think the butt thing would have been less bizarre. Now, this is somehow actually pretty cute. They're a good couple. Hey, homie, since you're the one who suggested it, maybe you'll be my turn update one day. <laughs> yeah, the mere suggestion gives you turn up plus two charm and turn up plus one smarts, which thankfully work just like the regular stats. Damn it. I went to the woods, but it didn't trigger the event I wanted. Whatever. Later, you're hanging out with Otterby and Damien in the woods. You're helping the two of them settle a bet. What's up, loser? Damien, you're about to get fucking wrecked. I can for sure headbutt a tree better than you can, and I'm gonna do it right now to prove it. Fight me, dude! Fucking bullshit, Otterby. My tree headbutts are 10 billion times stronger than yours. Let's fucking settle this. <laughs> Alright, let's make this a clean tree headbutting contest, you two. Gender rules, biggest trunk creator wins. Here we go. On my count. Three, two, one. Ah! Oh, hello. Look who wanders through my forest. A crowd of plump, delicious, fresh children. Hmm. Hello, children. Oh, no. It's that old witch who lives in the woods. The Baba Yaga. <laughs> to, to be quite honest, she's annoying as hell, and everybody knows it. Shut up. Hey. It's not a big deal. <laughs> hey, shut up. Don't you know it's rude to interrupt a tree headbutting contest? Now my forehead velocity is going to be thrown off by like 0 .002 milliseconds. Yeah, tell us what you want, then leave us alone or put your forehead through a fucking tree trunk. Ew. You guys, quick side note, am I the only one who notices that the Baba Yaga smells so much like soup? The soup smells overwhelming me right now. I can't get over it. Ah, oh, I'm so very sorry. The Baba Yaga did not mean to interrupt your taste, you tasty children. It's just that I am in need of a big, strong child to help me with a chore. See my house? The Baba Yaga points to the forest. It, yep, her house is like 40 feet away. Staying on chicken legs, it's super creepy. It smells like children parmesan. You see, children, the Baba Yaga's oven is broken. I need a toothsome, savory child to climb inside and fix it. But there's only room for one child. Which of you will help me? <laughs> Whoa, your oven's broken? I'll help you, even though you're a super weird old lady that sits in a bowl. You're outraged. Damien's picking this fucking moment to start behaving like a kind, helpful boy scout who's going to do a chore for an old lady. She's obviously gonna eat him. <laughs> what? No, no, no. I just love being inside of ovens, Tommy. They're warm and shit. Level up, loser. Back off, Damien. I'm helping the Baba Yaga. This is a side quest if I've ever seen one. Plus, you're too much of a weakling to fix an oven anyway. Fuck off. Fuck that and fuck you. I'm fixing that oven and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Hey, <laughs> yes. Fight, children. Fight. Cannot wait to feast on the lean, cursed fighter child. Or perhaps the spicy red baby. <laughs> I love it, because that's what everyone in the fandom calls Damien. That's fucking great. Well, your friends are dumb. They get into the Baba Yaga's oven. It's painfully obvious that she's going to cook and eat them. So figure out some way to not have that happen. Lure your fellow camper and close friend Rocco the Were Raviolo into the woods. They'll be much better candidate for fixing the oven. Were Raviolo? Tell the Baba Yaga to read your nutrition facts. Due to your unhealthy lifestyles, you contain an extremely high amount of sodium and hydrogenated fats. That sounds like smarts. That sounds like what we go for. Yeah, boy. Suddenly, you remember that you have the perfect solution to this whole Baba Yaga is going to eat your friends problem. Last week, you and Arvi and Damien got super drunk. 
and you all decided to get your respective nutritional value facts tattooed on your ankles. Most hilarious tattoos ever. You tell your friends to quickly show their ankle tattoos to the Baba Yaga. There's no way she'll eat you after she sees how high you all are in cholesterol. Hmm. Wow, I forgot that we got those. Honestly though, they're fucking rad. Oh, wait, homie, how are you? How are our awesome nutritional value ankle tattoos relevant? Yeah, I don't get it, homie. We're just gonna help the shady old witch fix her oven. How does this have anything to do with someone fucking eating us? Hmm, it would be nice to know if I'll get enough fiber when I eat these children. I mean, when these children fix my oven. Lean girl child, show me your ankle at once. Ah! Disgusting! This child is cursed! Its meat shall be quite foul. All witches know that. Curse rots the meat on a child's bones. The demon child is even worse. His blood contains massive amounts of arsenic and gunpowder, and there are multiple knives inside of its stomach, and three pieces of swallowed gum. Noise. Noise. Whenever I swallow a piece of gum, it falls through my body and ends up getting stuck in Arby's hair. It's hilarious. Lol. Ah! Your children are repugnant. You're not fit to feed even the hungriest witch. Goodbye, children. I'm going to Whole Foods for some higher quality organic children. <laughs> the Baba Yaga disappears into the magical cloud of purple smoke. Phew. Looks like your friends are safe from getting eaten. For now, at least. <laughs> Man, maybe that weird old lady left because now it doesn't smell like soup that bad anymore. But I really wanted to fix that fucking oven, you guys. Me too. Ovens are technically considered low-level fire weapons, so I thought it could help me level up my weapon crafting skills. Kind of bummed, honestly. <laughs> Wait, you guys. I think I just had an idea. Or it might just be a brain freeze from that smoothie I had earlier. But either way, homie, give me your phone. Hex grabs your phone and orders an oven online with same-day delivery. The delivery man brings your new oven to the woods and you all smash it to pieces. And spend the whole afternoon fixing it together. It's fun as hell and RV was right. You level up your f weapon crafting skills. You guys sit around your newly functional warm ass oven for a few hours. The oven is powerful. It gives you plus two fun, plus one creativity. Hell yeah. <laughs> I fucking love this game. <laughs> uh, where to sit? All right. Later, you're chilling by the fire when you hear a terrifying blood curdling, yet also slightly adorable sound. Dolly and Arby's hysterical giggling. What's up, loser? Oh, it's, oh, it's homie. I guess you can hang out with us if you want. We're just finishing up our weekly girl talk session. Girls night! <laughs> yeah, girl talk rules. And RV and I have so much to talk about. The next topic on our girl talk agenda is healthy eating habits. Mm. Yeah, good topic. Usually I have a small breakfast, but I think the most important meal of the day is the one you consume right before the dungeon mini boss fight. And obviously you should only be eating top notch ingredients. If you start consuming B tier meals, you'll miss out on lots of potential stat buffs. Cool ranch Doritos. <laughs> You're the one missing out, RV. Who cares if Doritos are D-tier items that technically lower your offense stats? They're cheesy. A cheesy mouth explosion. It's worth it. Ha, <laughs> that reminds me of a really awesome dinner I had a few days ago. Did you guys know that lit grenades are actually really high in fiber? <laughs> if you have a demon metabolism like me, you gotta make sure to get plenty of soluble and insoluble metals in your diet. That's why I eat a lot of airplanes. Uh, that makes sense. For me, I gotta keep a healthy balance between eating full meals and just regenerating using a flask potion. Potions are convenient, but you can overdo it. For real. It's like me and battle wine. I love to have two or three casks after a victory, but if I drink too many, I'll be slightly less bright blue the next day. Hmm? Dahlia, what do you think about that whole Whole30 thing? You know, the one where you were supposed to kill a Whole30 enemies every day for exercise? Aww. I get why people do it, but it takes a little bit of the fun out of murdering if you've got to do all that enemy counting all the time. Mm -hmm. You two are such food jocks. What about you, homie? If you're, going to, if you're going to girl talk with us, you've got to give us the tea on your healthy eating skills. Quick, express an opinion on healthy eating habits. Impress one of these lethal hotties. Seize the moment, homie. Honestly, uh, so my typical meal is eating 34 uncooked potatoes in the middle of a boss battle. Okay, yep, I already know. <laughs> I eat my enemies for breakfast and for dinner. Sometimes as a snack around 2 a.m. Oh, I relate so hard. Some people are into calorie counting, but I'm into HP counting. I only eat foods with the highest health regeneration stats. <laughs> and uncooked potatoes are the number one best health recovery items. Oh. Damn, that's some valuable strategic info, RV. I love girl talk. Just one question, do the potatoes have to be uncooked? Over it. Ugh, yeah, they totally do. I've been begging RV to make french fries or mashed potatoes, or even just bake one potato, but she won't do it. Of course I won't. I think the potatoes takes valuable time that could be spent finding more raw potatoes. And I can't tell you how many times my ass has been saved by an uncooked potato. Like this one time, I was battling against the necro wizard of 
Quantnria, and the bastard actually got me down to 10 remaining HP. I know, super embarrassing. No, it's understandable. His misplaced attacks are hella cowardly. They just come out of nowhere. Well, anyway, my health was down and he was charging up his finisher power beam attack, and I just started pounding as many raw potatoes as I could in the middle of the battle. I was getting hell HP from those potatoes. He got super confused and he was all like, Harvey, why are you eating so much in the middle of this battle? And then he got all offended by it. He was like, I can't believe you. You're being so disrespectful to me right now. Blah, 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 blah. I cannot believe he said that. What a douchebag. He's the worst finicky person ever. I know, and after all that, he finally was like, how the fuck are you eating so many potatoes, Arby? The amount of potatoes you're eating is terrifying. I surrender. I'm so fussy. <laughs> what a satisfying victory, Arby. You're one fearsome warrior. What an impressive potato consumer. Thanks, I know. Ugh, Girl Talk is so awesome because it's fun just to talk to people who get me, like Hex and Dahlia. I mean, I guess you were pretty great. And especially you, homie. You know me pretty well, so uh, thanks. Arvi's totally impressed with your boss battle dietary habits. You two share a romantic dinner of uncooked potatoes later that night. So starchy. <sighs> I fucking love this game. <laughs> I say that after every fucking Come encounter on. anymore, but goddamn it, this game's fucking great. Oh shit. Alright, what do we got? Hit the manor. What do we got? That day you venture into the haunted manor. Everything is going fine, and you're, and you're reassured on how brave you are. When suddenly a ghost, or is it just someone wearing a blanket with two holes? Reference. So hard to tell the difference. Appear so hard to tell the difference. Appears and whispers in your ear. Remember, one day you'll be long gone, and no one will remember you. All the struggle you endure to become a better version of yourself, both personally and professionally, will eventually mean nothing. The ghost leaves you while you take all that, and gaining plus two boldness in the process. Okay, so I got the second Whoa. event in that one scene I was trying to set up. So far, so good. God damn it, it's time for alcohol. You know what, fuck it, I'll take a gamble. I don't... Uh, but do I want to take a gamble after things have been going so well? Fuck it. Welcome, welcome, you're new here, don't fret, let me... I prepare you a drink, the drink of the day. You may choose to drink that one, but if you're not interested, you're, you're lucky. There's a mystery box with the second option. Could be better, it could be worse, but one thing is for sure, it will be mysterious. And these drinks, look, choose whatever you want, but I'm not responsible for whatever you put in your mouth. I'm wisdom training for you to test my concoction, so get ready, good luck. No idea if I got the recipe right. Want to try it? Otherwise, you'll always have the mystery box. Bone hurting juice. I don't think I want to try bone hurting juice. That sounds like. What's in the box? The mystery box. So bold of you. Hope you're happy with it. What does it say? Oh, WC wine, water closet wine. Okay. Toilet wine, yep. Don't drink the toilet wine. I just have it here because Polly insisted that I offer it as a marketing stunt. This shit cannot do anything good. Okay. Fuck! <laughs> Fuck! I should have just tried it. God damn it. Hope you can stomach that, happy trails. Fuck you, Juan. Fuck you. Honestly, I can recover from this though. I can still recover from this. I can I still can recover from this. That average one completely fucked me over. This I can recover from. Maybe. <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe I got fucked over again. Actually I could totally believe it. I can fucking totally believe it. God damn it. Alright, to the matter we go. You're chilling in a spooky hallway, carving your initials into a wall that's probably actually flesh when Arby charges down the hall and purposely rams into you. Hey, homie, it's me, Arby. Hex is also here. What's up? Listen, you've got to help me. I opened a haunted can of Dr. Pepper, and I'm cursed with invis invisibility. You give Hex a sidelong glance. They shrug and go back to knitting. At first, I was like, how is this a curse? Being invisible is great. Permanent sneak attack bonus, and I could rob tombs whenever I want. But it's actually... Kind of lonely. Can someone help me break this curse? You always seem to help hot people like me with their problems. You're about to explain to Otterby that she's not actually invisible when Polly and Scott come walking down the hall laughing hysterically. Well, Scott comes walking down the hall. Polly floats towards you upside down, holding a spectral saxophone for some reason. Scotty! How'd I do? Did I say it right this time? I don't know, Scott. What word are you trying to say? Pranked! You did great, buddy. Ray. <laughs> Arby, you got so pranked. 
You weren't really invisible. We just convinced you that we you were invisible using lying. <laughs> that explains why my stealth bonus didn't increase. At least I'm not actually invisible. Wait, we're pranking out of me? I can help. Shaboom. What? Come on! Don't worry, it'll wear off in a few hours. In the meantime, just try to enjoy this hilarious prank. I just got finished talking about how being invisible makes me sad. I hate being sad. Oh boy, I always seems to be in one of her stabbing moods. <laughs> Luckily, you know, super fun invisible activity that'll help her look on the bright side. Do I? Finally finding out what Dominique is saying about her behind her back. Or joining Forbes 30 invisible people under 30. I'm gonna fail either of these. Shit, fun? Okay, I whatever, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. I am always interested in what NPCs have to say. Got all the best guest, the best quest hooks. Oh, we eavesdropping? Sick. I'll make us all invisible then. No, wait. If I'm invisible, how will I know which one is me? How do you normally know which one is you? I know. You guys got ahead. I think Scott needs a walk. Have fun. X makes you see through, and the three of you head over to Dominique's tent for some good old-fashioned privacy violation. Dominique is there, talking to himself as usual. Oh man. I hope Arafi doesn't find out about the stash of gold coins buried between the roots of that willow tree that was struck by lightning. I mean, honestly, I hope nobody finds out about it. It's my life savings. Arafi is somebody so technically is somebody so technically I don't want her to find out about it either. As long as I'm talking to myself, I'll well say how impressed I am by how good homie is at sex. Well, I haven't actually had sex with him, but he told me all about it. What impresses me the most though is his modesty. He told me never to talk about his sexual prowess to anyone unless I was totally alone. He said he didn't want his potential love interest to be biased by that information. He wants to be loved for who he is, not the mind-blowing orgasms he could provide. <laughs> anyway, that's enough about homie and how lucky anyone would be to have sex with him. Now it's time for my daily recitation of all my bank account numbers and social media passwords. As Dominic continues to demonstrate his competent complete lack of paranoia, you look over where RV should be and notice that the empty air appears to be blushing. You can plus two charm, plus one fun. I'll take it. After that horrible drink that Juan served me, I will take it. Uh, Alright. Okay, 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 okay. To the woods. While hiking through the woods, you're approached by an NPC who has a quest for you. You can tell she's an NPC because she only says the same four things over and over and keeps doing the same idle animation. The NPC's quest is to deliver a very important scroll to her father. She makes it extremely clear that no one else is allowed to read it. Terrible things will happen. You read it, of course. It turns out to be her father's secret recipe to the perfect peach cobbler. Looks like her dad is never going to make that famed dessert in time for the NPC family potluck because you eat the, re because you eat the recipe scroll and gain plus two smarts. Of course. After surviving that, you meet up with Aravi to check out a new dungeon she's been telling you about. A three hour hike and several side quests later, you're finally there. Something seems a little off. What the hell? All the loot's been hung on clothes hangers and arranged in shops? Where's my hype battle music? This is just bloodless covers of 90s soft rock hits. A troll leaps out from behind a large fake fern. Prepare for a random encounter, he cries. That's more like it. Let's go. With flavor, he continues, displaying a tray of piping hot cinnamon pretzel bites. Try Pretzel Prison, located on floor B2. Come on, this is dumber than specking into defense for a solo DPS build. I don't know, Ravi. These pretzel bites are pretty dope. I say we hear them out. Pretzel bites aren't saying anything. If they were, at least they would be. That would be interesting. Ugh, who ruined this dungeon? <laughs> Thank you, Reed. Who significantly increased the property value of this dungeon? My little money bundle. The name's Mr. Pappas, CEO. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm the one responsible for turning this literal hole in the ground into a prime investment opportunity. Dungeons are terrible business. They don't charge a mission, they carry enormous legal liability, and adventurers are always carting off the merchandise for free. <laughs> Whatever. The only business that belongs in that dungeon is the none of yours kind. Come on, Hex, let's go back to camp. Don't you mean, let's go back to mall? That's right, I purchased Camp Spooky. I'm turning it into another shopping mall. After all, the employees at the shopping mall need somewhere to shop, don't you agree? You villain. I'll show you how a real adventurer shops by stabbing you and taking your organs. Because that's how I get most of my loot. You fool. You think mortal weapons can arm me? I have six guys on retainer whose job it is to get stabbed on my behalf. I'll have to do better than that. Damn, he's right. Can't beat him alone. 
and to form some kind of anti-capitalist adventuring party. But RV's got no idea where to start. Hex is too busy watching reruns of Wife Swap to, con to contribute. It's up to you to suggest the perfect team up. Small business owners hate big business. Gather local entrepreneurs to form a small business mecca. Seek out the powerful and secretive order of e-commerce. It is said that no shopping mall can stand against them. Hmm. <clears throat> Top one? Damn it, create fucking creativity. It's brilliant. The area around Cam Camp Spooky is indeed home to many vibrant small businesses. Most of which carry to the camp's constant need for replacement buildings and medical supplies. Come on, let's form a mecca. <laughs> Alright, children, you have fun. I'll just be over here, growing steadily wealthier. Survivors of community organizing later, you stand before an army of local business owners, ready to lay down their lives to oppose the shopping mall menace. So what's the plan, homie? Perhaps Gil the contractor Ware Bison should form the head, as he has the most construction experience. Hmm. I'm kind of thinking you would form the head. You motion, you motion over a couple of small business owners and stand on their shoulders. What the hell are you doing? That's not a mecha you're forming. It's a human pyramid. You smugly point out that it can't be a human pyramid if it's made out of monsters, right? Anyway, it's not that. It's way cooler than that. You ask Elvira, the seamstress, to sew a couple of goblins to your arms. Elvira to sew goblins to your arms? Well, that accomplished. They're not sweet arm cannons. I doubt you can even lift them. You explain as if Aravi is just a little child. Obviously, the goblins will carry guns, which they can fire. Plus, bonus, they'll gain nutrients from the food you eat, so they won't have to stop shooting to have lunch. Hold on. I think I saw three movies about this, homie. Are you trying to make a really complicated human centipede? The last time, you explained, it's not a human centipede if everyone is... Ugh, that's fucked up. Come on, RV, let's ditch this creep. Why? Human centipede sounds like it's worth a lot of... A lot of XP? Yeah, yeah. I know you think everything is a monster from an RPG, and it's adorable, but you do not want to be around for this. Let's go. <laughs> Hex curses out of his legs, so she has no choice but to get the fuck out. Leaving you alone with your nasty small business centipede project. Damn, you're so close to making your fantasy reality. It was minus two charm, minus one smarts. Ah! I was worried that one might have been creative too. Oh, fuck, goddamn it. Oh, okay, whatever. Auto and Calculester, what's going on here? It's dark. So dark. The darkness surrounds you. You are lost to the darkness. Suddenly you remember that your eyes are closed. That's why it's dark. You open them and see Auto and Calculester hanging by the campfire nearby. I'm excited for our food truck. <laughs> Tell me, I am pleased to see you. We were just brainstorming some ideas for our up-and-coming business venture, a food truck. The adventure must begin! <laughs> yep, between the three of us, we have all the skills required for a food truck. Snack food enthusiasm, ruthless ambition, and the ability to Google recipes. Uh, snacks though? I'm the one bringing the snack food enthusiasm. I've eaten 12,421 different flavors of Pringles in the last week alone. And as usual, I'm the one bringing the ruthless ambition. I'll do whatever it takes to win in any situation or context, regardless of whatever's socially acceptable. Oh, I thought I was the one bringing the ruthless ambition. This is such a relief. Nah. Anyway, I still think that our biggest problem is getting the word out. How do we convince people to come to the truck if violence is an illegal marketing tactic or whatever? Hmm. You guys, I got the perfect idea. Let's do some kind of fun promo. I'm all, I'm all about that BOGO life, and I've got the coupons to prove it. A promotion is an efficient way to advertise, but they can be risky. Risky, For example, Toys R Ass was criticized harshly for their Take a Baby, Leave a Baby sales event. May I chime in? To avoid any possible bad publicity and increase our margins, why don't we have a pay double sale? Customers will get to pay twice as much as normal for their purchases. Mm. Nah, how about we do a contest to see who can kill the most goblins while wearing our merch? That way our merch will be worn by badasses and goblin victims. You guys just don't get promos. They're supposed to be fun, so let's buy a t-shirt cannon and call it a day. Hmm. Since each of us owns equal share in the food truck, the only democratic way to settle this with a simple vote. Calculus Street conducts the vote between the four of you. Everyone votes for their own idea. You formally abstain. Ah, it's a tie. This is so dumb. Voting is stupid. It never works. I am disappointed. <laughs> if we can't even make this decision, it's statistically improbable that we have the coordination necessary to run a food truck. Or be friends. Quick, help your friends think of the best promo ever for their food truck. If you don't, they'll never get to taste their greasy, overpriced, lukewarm snack foods. Pie day. Nope, I already know that's calculus here. Cheat day. A day about forgetting your diet and treating yourself. Also, every meal includes a free cheat code to help you speed run your life. <gasps> oh, how feasible. Cheat days are a very popular concept. 
For example, every two years I cheat and allow myself to interrupt someone, even though it's not polite. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. On my cheat days, I give myself a special treat. Consuming Arby's most precious memories. <laughs> Damn it, Hex. Is that why I can't remember any of my loot-themed childhood birthday parties? Yeah, <laughs> whatever. Those memories weren't that precious. Anyway, you should totally do cheat day. Do the cheat day promo. It's a sick idea. I take a cheat day once a month myself. Oh, we're aware, Arby. You realize that the government sends out national security alerts about your cheat days, right? Ha, mm. <laughs> that's awesome. Honestly, it's justified. I usually start out a cheat day by inputting a quick rosebud or mother load command for infinite money. I get that. Play of the game. And then I rapidly jump up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, and then I press start. That gives me infinite lives, so I'm functionally unkillable. But cheat codes are tricky because if you use them too much, it just kind of takes the challenge away. And also, you clip through walls way more. That's why I just do once a month. Engaging cap module. Dot exe. <laughs> Engaging cap module. <laughs> Amazing. RV, I did the math, and our food truck customers have a 99.6% chance of standing this promo. Which specific cheat code do you suggest we give the consumers? <laughs> You know what would be hilarious? We should tell our customers how to turn on huge heads mode. This will be fun. OMG. Ravi, that would be so fun. We have to do it. Their heads will be so big, they, they look like such idiots. LOL. I just have one question. Wouldn't our customers not enjoy having huge heads? Don't humans have very frail necks that are incapable of supporting much weight? Ah, oh yeah, good point. I guess we could just give the customers a cheat code to skip everything and get to the final level. What's the final level? I I can't explain it, Cal. But when you get there, you'll know. Trust me. I mean, and I guess I, you were pretty great. I guess one of us should say thanks to Homie for coming up with a good idea. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, uh, thanks. You have an awesome afternoon brainstorming food trick ideas together. At one point, Otterby mentions that she wants to show you her hot coffee mod later. Score! I get that reference. Uh, all right! To the manor. You go to the haunted manor to gain some boldness. Since you found a brochure that promised some boldness if you visited. Instead you find a mischievous demon. It was all ruse to lure you here. The demon will take nine years of your life. You take the demon to court for misleading advertising. The jury isn't fond of mischievous, de mischievous demons who fool people into giving years of their life. So you win. The demon has to give you plus two boldness. Fuck yeah. Hey, homie. Get your sorry ass in here. You found a room in the manor that isn't haunted somehow. You follow Dahlia into her room, only to find that it is fucking crawling with ghosts. <laughs> oh, don't worry about them. This is just where the ghosts go when they're on break. No spooky stuff at all. Ah. Yeah, I'm talking, and I'm taking advantage of the relaxation by killing them for bonus EXP. Hey, I thought we said we weren't gonna fight any ghosts in this room. We did say that. But actions speak louder than words, Joy. My therapist taught me that. Oh. Guys, writing on the window over here. You didn't tell me that there'd be reading in this room. This is written in blood. It's kind of cool. Okay. I know what you did last summer. Huh, what's that supposed to mean? It means, I know what you did last summer. Oh, it's just the knife guy. Hey, knife guy, do you know what the writing on this window is about? My name is Jerry, not knife guy. And can't you just ask me to tell you what you did last summer? You did it, you should know. Hmm. But if you also know, shouldn't you be able to tell us what specific thing you're referring to? Ugh, you guys just don't get it. You're supposed to frantically ask yourselves that question. Before I dramatically remember, before dramatically remembering the answer, right before I stab you. Oh, here, if it'll help if I stab you all a lot. <laughs> Can't believe you don't remember. So rude. You need to be rude, and also to be stabbed. Luckily, you're pretty sure you know what event from last summer Jerry is referring to. It obviously means that two-week period where you all got really into Ant Eater documentaries. His birthday. He forgot Jerry's birthday. <laughs> How could we? Ah, oh, fuck. Ugh, I wish there was friendly fire. Oof. I didn't forget Jerry's birthday, I did. Yeah, where the hell were you? All the hottest mass murders were there. <laughs> Professor Gun Eyes, Teen Smoking, me. <laughs> teen Smoking. Mm -hmm. Me too. A lot of people don't know this about me, but I've killed a ton of people. Technically it was a tragic Pringle related accident, but hey, it gets me to Jerry's parties. Hang on, I was at the party, but I'm not a mass murderer. How many ghosts have you murdered since entering this room? What? Roughly all of them? Ah, I get it. I was on the guest list, but I did crush the party for a climactic showdown with Professor Gun Eyes. <laughs> yeah, you did. Party Crusher's the coolest kind of party guest. I don't need your privilege, Jerry. 
But I appreciate it nonetheless. Wow. Looks like homie isn't cool enough mass murder to get invited to Jerry's birthday party. I want to see a good enough person to crash the party in the name of justice and decency. Oh, does that mean homie sucks? I mean, I didn't want to say anything, but there is a reason he wasn't invited. <laughs> anyway, this is all an elaborate way of inviting you all to my birthday bash this year. All of you except for homie, obviously. Aww. Obviously. No, oh, you hate being left out. You plead with Jerry and he finally agrees to let you attend as a murder victim. He was minus two charm and minus one boldness. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Nothing is going my way and I fucking hate it. All right, let's take it to the woods. What do we got? During your hike through the woods, you find a baby bird that's fallen out of his nest. You nurse him back to health with some delicious trail mix. You also give him some great advice on puberty and how to do his taxes when he grows up. Then the mama bird finds you. She is pissed that you are holding her baby. She tries to pick your eyes out, but you fight her off. You've learned an important lesson today. Don't fuck with birds. You gain plus two smarts. Don't fuck with birds. Oh, hey squad. The sky's clear. The birds are singing, and you, a robot, a, cur a curse, and you, a robot, a cursed monster slayer, and a death bringer reaper are merrily skipping through the woods, hunting a leprechaun. So what's the deal with killing this leprechaun? How many experiments, experience points am I gonna get? Do I get a sneak bonus if I attack from behind? Error. Due to the sixth mass extinction, the slaying of leprechauns is inadvisable. They are considered endangered by the United Monsters Nations. Yeah, I'm not really interested in working today. I figured we'd grab him, get some sweet pics for the gram, stick a pot of gold emoji on there, and release him and call it a day. Speaking of the gram, this is one of the only spots in the woods I haven't posted a pic of yet. Hop in, everyone. It's selfie time. We gather around for a cute pic of full of ironic duck face dabbing and bunny ears. Lit. Uploading, 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 uploading... I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I am using hate idiomatically here because technically I feel nothing. But there appears to be no reception here. What? Yeah, that's such bullshit. No connectivity. My party has lost their buffs. Totally non optimal. My memories are unable to back up, and with no internet access, I am unable to continuously learn and download updated information to correct my mistakes. What if I become racist? What if I connect to the internet and Calculester is over is trending because I have become problematic. You're worried? If I don't post it in the next five minutes, all my followers will think I've died, and I won't even be online to reap the pity likes. Hey, chill guys. Being online isn't everything. Let's just hang tight and order a pizza. Oh, no, we can't. Oh, no, we can't. We have no service. Oh, fuck. Where am I gonna get pizza? We need the internet. Stat. Yikes. Seems like your friends are spiraling out of control. Of course, you could use this as a teachable moment about your extreme dependence on the internet. But you're not going to do that, lol. You're taking the easy way out and snagging some net. Here's how. What we need is the long wireless antenna. Hey, wait, what's that between your legs, Calculuster? We just need to lure the internet out into the woods. Quick, create some content. That's gonna be creativity. So I think, uh, I have to be top one. Smarts, let's go. <laughs> Friend, tell me. You mean the extremely long wireless antenna between my legs? No judgment, but why are you keeping an extremely long high-powered Wi-Fi antenna between your legs? I've been storing it for friend Damien. He said it was to hide evidence of a perfectly legal burglary slash arson, inc arson incident. That would one day double as extremely delayed comedic payoff. <laughs> His face, nice. It would seem that today is the day. Pick for the socials, hashtag eggplant emoji, hashtag wireless antenna emoji. But hey, it doesn't really matter what's between your legs. As long as you can get us internet so we can order pizza. Not what I was going to say, not exactly a universal truth, but in this case, it works. It sure does. Now post gets you plus two charm, and the slice of pizza you share with Otterby and Hex gives you plus one fun. Thanks, Calculuster. Four, let's go. Whoa! I hope that fire is safe. Ooh, RV and Calculuster again. More about the food truck? <laughs> Suddenly the breeze shifts and you detect a scent on the wind. It's a potent combination of smells, string cheese, copper wires, and cursed medieval weaponry. That smell can only mean one thing. Hex, Calculuster, and RV are nearby. Hex in the house! <laughs> Yo, homie. So you know how me, Ravi, and Cal are gonna open a food truck once camp is over? Yes, go on. Uh. Well, I want to sell. 
I want to sell Oreo explosions. It's my own recipe. But you grind up Oreos into a fine powder and snort that powder. Do you love it or super love it? I super love it. You want hex about trademark laws and suggest changing the name of the dish to cookies and cream explosions. You also recommend they charge $400 for it. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I can't wait for all the gold I'm going to mine from this food truck. I'm not grinding in the cave in the cave levels to catch high value bugs for me. <sighs> I also think it'll be a financial, financially reasonable investment, although I'm most excited about the chance to work so closely with organic food material. <laughs> I'm really passionate about the process of digestion in general. I'm so excited that people will literally consume calories that I help prepare. Care for it. Toads. As long as you're cooking everything with at least three different kinds of animal fat, I'm on board. I'm excited for our food truck. Wonderful. Now that we've got some menu items decided upon, perhaps we should discuss the brand of the food truck. I'm not an expert myself, but... Friend Milo did recently tell me that brands are entirely synonymous with relevancy, and any business without one is basically a bleeding corpse. Perhaps we should think of a brand. Uh... Yeah, we gotta figure out a brand for sure. How about we're the world's most violent food truck? We can, make, we can mount a Gatling gun on top and make its customers dodge the bullets. Grizzly, but memorable. It is also probably a better idea than what I wrote down for a brand. Traveling vehicle with adequate food service capabilities. You guys are both thinking too small. We get Red Bull to sponsor us. Then we can fry everything in Red Bull and use their corporate branding. Level up, loser. Fuck that shit. Red Bull blows. Gatling gun food truck. I'm not backing down this RV. I've cursed you once. I'll do it again. We're doing Red Bull. <laughs> They had Sean do the fucking R2-D2 sound. That's great. <laughs> I believe that we should argue at a more reasonable volume level. Well, this isn't going anywhere. Looks like your friends need help figuring out the perfect brand for their food truck. Get in with your best content strategy. Always trust the data. Nope. Food is overrated. Make the whole thing a potion bar. One life potion has more HP than six servings of food anyway. Play of the game! Whoa, that idea is a game changer. Potions are the hottest loot. At this point, about 80% of my meals are just potions. Care for it. Hell yeah, I love it. Potion bar would be the perfect time for me to design some trendy, sexy mood lighting. Plus, ingesting potions does get me drunk, so win-win. Hmm. Yes. Personally, I am just relieved we found a brand idea that we can all agree on. Potion bar it is. By the way, is battery acid a potion that people can consume? Mm -hmm. yeah. Technically, yes. And you know what else is technically a potion? Melted butter mixed with vodka. Listen, I like those things separate, um... Power. Oh yeah, it's called a Russian penthouse tiger potion. It's actually really good to drink before fighting a poison-based enemy. Huh? Oh, and that reminds me, we should serve devil goblets. It's a potion made by boiling the stomachs of freshly slaughtered monsters. We could serve them with paper umbrellas. God, I remember getting so fucked up on devil goblets when I turned 21. I had a defense buff going for weeks after. <gasps> Honor V, you seem to know more information about potions than the entire internet. You are so knowledgeable. It really is. Trust me. It's actually one of her most annoying qualities. But whatever we do, we have to sell my favorite warm stamina potion. That sounds like an appropriate menu item. What ingredients will we need to brew it? Can we expect a reasonable margin cost ratio? Oh, it's easy. You just gotta get this certain kind of dark brown bean. Then you roast the bean, grind it up, and slowly pour hot water over the beans through a filter. Mm. Yeah. Arvi, isn't that just coffee? Like, you're describing a cup of coffee. Hmm. Well, I guess it kind of is just coffee. It's way more badass to call it warm stamina potion. You, you know what? You're right. Our food trucks will refer to it only as warm stamina potion. Fuck society. They gotta deal with it. Fuck yeah. Fuck yes. Potion bar food truck is officially the best idea in all of history. Kind of amazing that homie came up with it. So, uh, thanks. Harvey is so pleased with, with you that she brews you one of her favorites, the mounting sexual tension with a main character potion. Hot. No! Don't, no, no, okay, we gotta go skills, we gotta go skills. The weekend is here, so you go visit Juan, the small magical Latino cat. I forgot small. That's the one adjective I forgot. Well, well, well. I hope you have your reflexes ready, because what I have ready is a selection of weird, questionable drinks. Sharpen your fingers, because here we go. No, fuck you. No, fuck you. Hey. Don't try to back me to a court. G give me- Yo, give me the rainbow shit. Give me the rainbow shit. Give me the rainbow shit. Ah, fucking rainbow. Fucking rainbow. Fucking rainbow. Fucking ra ra No! I got the Tetris drink. 
sex on the beach. <laughs> it's censored. That's <laughs> uh, sex on the beach. I brought, the, brought this drink to the next level, as you can see. Give it a try. I assure you it'll be a fun ride. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I get tipsy very fast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I fucking so. Hope you can stomach that. Happy trails. Shit, I'll take it. Now we got three stats in the double digits. Alright. To the manor, what do we got? That day in the haunted manor, you accidentally stumble upon a cult meeting in the hallway. The cultists are wearing terrifying black robes, standing over a bloodied body and chanting. You try to flee, but one of them shoves a flyer in your hand. The ink burns your eyes to read, but you manage to find the words, New recruits get healthcare benefits with same day sign up. What? Sold? You get a bunch of new cultist buddies, and your new insurance covers spontaneous plus two boldness growths. Cool. <laughs> you meet up with Aravi to see if you can stab the manor walls until they stop bleeding. It's working about as well as you might expect when- What do we have Hey, here? stop that. I'm the only one who gets to stab in the haunted manor. And I'm here to stab you two. Mm. Yawn. You really think the threat of vanilla stabbing is gonna scare me, Jerry? You know who I am? Jerry, we already had this conversation. What are you talking about? That's right. I recognize you from r slash love to stab. And I gotta say, even for a slasher killer, you're pretty uncreative. Uh, uncreative? I'll shoot you uncreative. Get cursed. Sick self-burn dog. I mean, because you're uncreative. And I'm going to show you yourself after I cut your face off. Can I save? You're doing terrific. Whatever. You have no idea how creative my murders are. What would you say if, for example, I killed you using methods that were emblematic of the seven deadly sins? I'd say that's the exact plot of the whole movie Seven, and you're nuts if you think you can ever be as much of a creep as Kevin Spacey. <laughs> nice. It's pronounced the Seven in RV. Shut up! I told you I can't make Eldritch mouth sounds like you can. God. Stab. Stab. Shut up! Shut stab. up! Shut up! Or I'll stab you on the mouth. Well, way to rip off mouth stabbers. A knife in the mouth is worth two in the mouth. <laughs> also, my mouth is an illusion, so good luck. Okay, that's it. You guys are such hip, creative murderers. Why don't you suggest a murder theme that's never been done before? Ooh, ooh, you've got one. You've got one. A good theme murder should delight while it terrifies. Suggest you model his murders after fan favorite Friends episodes. <laughs> Maybe if you get him caught, he'll leave you alone. Tell him his theme should be your personal contact info. As long as it's not creativity or charm. That feels like it could be charm. Yes! Okay. Oh, I love friends. You should do the one with the evil orthodontist, directed by Peter Boners. That's a good one. Peter Boners is legitimately the funniest, na funniest name a real person has ever had. But people's mouths are gross. I'd rather be an evil optometrist or an evil skin takeoff man. Mm. There's no episodes about those. Oh, what about the one with the cop? Somehow I feel like that one would end badly for me. Mm. Ah, yeah, sorry. No jail can hold me, so sometimes I forget that other people have to avoid getting caught doing crimes. Don't worry about it. You just gotta keep thinking. Wait, I've got it. What about the one with Phoebe's uterus? That's a great one. It's the beginning of a really touching plotline. I always wanted to give my murderers some emotional depth. All I need is Phoebe's uterus. Ooh, good luck with that one, dude. Yes. Phoebe's a fictional character. Even if she wasn't, nobody wants to just hand you their uter uterus these days. Trust me. Hey, there's a will to murder. There's a way to murder. Later, guys. I'll have to live my nightmares. Whoa, you carried this one. Thanks for getting that guy out of our hair, homie. You too, Hex. I knew you were actually good for something. Wait, you are trying to get rid of him? I'm just reminiscing about my favorite Friends episodes. You guys remember the one with the dozen lasagnas? This naturally leads to you guys going out and getting a dozen lasagnas. Eating them gives you plus two charm and plus one creativity. Okay, this is the one. Okay, here we go. This'll fucking settle if I can. Okay, okay, so this is the final event in that fucking subline. Uh, potential secret ending. Okay, either attack it in its heart, Texas as lovers. I feel like it's gotta be that second one. Ah! There's, uh... 
God damn it. Attack the dungeon boss in his heart, takes the six lover's nest, they'd be willing to spitefully share its weakness. That would take charm. I I Yes! Fuck that. yeah, I had enough smarts this time around. It is fucking Google its weakness. That's genius. Our internet search history reveals our truest, most vulnerable selves. For example, I recently Googled how to eat someone's hair. Yeah, we saw that. Extract it. User. Yep. Start checking through the boss's search history looking for weakness. He recently Googled how to redecorate lava pit and boss adventurer fan art. Smut lemon. And the dungeon boss also searched, should I get mole on my back checked out? Local fire lizard dermatologist. How to use mirror to see mole on my back. Huh? That thing on its back is a mole? Wow. Thought that was a glowing red weak point. That thing is inflamed. Hey, dungeon boss, I know we're in the middle of a battle to the death and everything, but you should really get that mole on your back checked out. Wait, for real? The dungeon boss roars. D time out, are you being serious? The mole is on my back, so I can't see it. Should I go to the doctor? Hmm. I mean, I'm not an expert, but I would go get it checked out by a dermatologist right away. Hmm. Yeah, my girl is right. The skin is the biggest organ on the body. You gots to take care of it. I'm gonna go see my dermatologist right now. The dungeon boss roars. He leaves the boss chamber. The ring of sustenance appears in the middle of the room. Nice. We did it. We defeated the dungeon boss through the magic power of dermatology. Damn, this ring of sustenance is awesome. When it's equipped, I get a plus 14 boost to my reaction speed. And any damage I take is reduced by half. Oh. Plus, it can produce an infinite supply of freshly baked mega bread. This success Best tastes dungeon like a good ever. Burrito. Do you want to be my support? Hell yeah. Yeah, victory is ours. Thanks for saving my ass back there, homie. I know I can count on you. Your adventuring skills have earned you out of his respect, and a fresh serving of mega bread. The bread gets you a new heart container, along with plus three boldness. So it's time. It's time. I can do this. Yes. 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 Come on. I completed the sub story. Let's go. Come on. All right. You seek out your favorite monster slayer. Hey, homie. There's no time for talking. Adventure awaits. Yes. Arvi grabs your hand, grabs your hand, and whisks you away on another adventure. She doesn't talk much, but you've learned talking is not her thing. She's a woman of action, and through action you bond. You go on an intense dungeon crawling session together. You slay and you loot. It's okay. She's got her way of connecting with her feelings. You feel like you can wait. It's hard to keep up with Arvi, but the good news is, after all your plundering and battling, you got a sponge. there's also time for relaxing. <laughs> Fucking Witcher 3 reference. I love it. <laughs> And when the intensity of battle wears off, Arvi seems to lower her guard. One second. I had to take a screenshot of that. She may not confess her feelings today, but there's time. Today, what she does is ask you to wash her back. And for now, that's more than enough. Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Not only did I get a good ending, I got the fucking secret ending. Not only did I get secret ending, I got the fucking Witcher 3 reference. Fuck yeah, I'll take it. Uh, that's fucking great. That's fucking great. <laughs> uh, I love this game. I fucking love it. No surprise, I knew I would. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Anyway, I'm gonna end this recording session here. Uh, in the next one, well, we'll pick another character. Fuck it. I'll probably pick it right now. Who do, you know, I'll decide now. I'll decide now. Who do, who do we want? We got Joy, we got Dahlia, we got Damien, Damien, Calculester, who was the, who was the fifth one? No! Fuck all that! Mothman! Don't think I forgot. I, I mean, I did forget, but don't think I forgot. No. I can't believe I, I'm such a crazy person. Can't believe I was gonna completely throw Mothman under the bus like that. I even said, I'm like, nah, nah, my next run, it's gotta be Mothman. And I'm right. It's gotta be Mothman. We, we gotta seek out Mothman. We're going to seek out Mothman. So next recording session, Mothman. But for now, I'm gonna end this recording session here. Like I said already, I'm repeating myself. Anyway, until next time, <laughs> peace.